Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to our course on Marketing Management 1. This is first session of this course titled Introduction to, Man Introduction to Marketing and I have with me my senior colleague Professor Jayanta Chatterjee. Hello. So, we will be taking it, you through this uh, introduction to marketing in this session and whenever if required we have Professor Chatterjee with us for useful and very very interesting insights on the topic. This is going to be the course content of this uh, session. We will be talking about marketing its definition, commonly known myths around about uh, the notions about marketing in our society and then how we can look at marketing. So, there are two dominant perspective on marketing that we will talk about of which we will talk about uh, marketing as a social exchange process and then we will also talk about marketing as an organizational function and then we will go into the concept of value and then we will talk a little bit about very very important core concepts in the marketing to understand marketing as a process and then finally, we will talk about a strategic marketing process. There are very common myths in our society about marketing what marketing is. When we see someone talking about someone some companies promotional campaign and then say the company was marketing its product or when we see a salesperson pushing his product to us selling a insurance policy to someone we say he is just marketing it. However, these are just a part of marketing as a process which comes at the very end of the marketing proce process if preceding steps are performed in a more skillful manner probably the requirements for these sales and promotional efforts is lot more limited. So, marketing probably is much more than what we commonly understand in our society. There are basically two different perspective in which we can understand the marketing. One is looking at marketing as a social process and the other one is understanding marketing as an organizational function. So, while going into this the first perspective which is social process of marketing basically marketing is an exchange of value this exchange of value to happen there is a more formal definition by one of the very famous academician in the marketing area and his co-authors in his book which defines marketing as a social process by which individual and groups obtain what they need and want through creating, offering and freely exchanging products and services of value with others. Now, here there are couple of things which are very important to note that it is a social process through which individuals and groups fulfill their needs what they want from others and in this process people create offer and freely exchange product and services which others also value. An illustration of what uh, this exchange process is, here you can understand one person who likes the fish probably professor like Ch professor Chatterjee who is really <laughs> fond of fish, he is buying a fish in exchange of some monetary returns to the person who is providing the fish. It is important if this social process if the exchange potential has to exist there has to be certain conditions fulfilled and as probably you can understand from the previous figure one of the very easily understandable condition for this exchange process to happen is there has to be two parties for the exchange to happen. The second condition is both parties should have or should be able to produce or create which has something of value to the other party. I have 
something but if other person does not value it, the other party does not value the product or the services which I am offering, obviously the exchange is not feasible. The third condition is that each party is capable of communication and delivery for the value that they hold with themselves. So, it is important that communication and delivery is possible if because of the geographical constraint or because of the other constraint the two parties are unable to communicate and deliver what they have then probably again this exchange is not going to happen. So, those are some of the barriers that comes very common barriers that exist for the exchange process in the society. Each party is free to accept or reject the exchange offer. If an exchange is happening forcibly okay, or probably an exchange is happening just because uh, someone is showing gratitude or probably someone is gifting something to other, that process cannot be termed as an exchange. The last condition for this exchange process is each party believes that it is appropriate or desirable to deal with the other party. If you do not believe that other party is probably whom you should deal with, then again the exchange will not happen. This condition is of significance when probably two groups like two countries ex have an exchange, supposedly they, there is a defense system okay, which a country develops, obviously it is not going to sell it a company which it does not perceive as a friend friendly country, because it can understand that, uh, that in, in certain conditions the same defense system which is it is offering to the other party can be utilized against it. Now, here what, what you should have noted in this definition of this social exchange process is that what we are talking about is the concept of value that there will be an exchange of value. So, what is value basically? Value is something which is very central to the marketing as a process and value we can understand it is a function of benefit and the cost. If we want to represent it as a mathematical function, we can say that value is, is a basically a function of benefit and cost or to be more precise it is benefit difference cost. However, what we talk in marketing or what we understand is more important than value is perceived value, because consumers or the customers make their decision based on their perception of the value rather than what is the actual value. Now, here the benefits and the cost can further be subdivided and the benefits could be of two types. The benefit could be seen as an emotional benefit or to the basic level it could be functional benefits. So, let us take an example of a car. When we purchase a car, what are the functional benefits? The functional benefit is that a car provides you the transport fulfills your transportation needs and it also probably fulfills to, to a certain extent your I mean it is more safe than probably traveling by a two wheeler. So, those are basically the functional benefit. Along with those functional benefit, there are certain emotional benefit which are attached with a purchase of a car, which is probably if you have a car, you have a better status symbol in the society. So, that is what the emotional benefit is. Now, it is very important to understand in what kind of markets you are operating and then accordingly probably you have to see where your focus should be, whether, whether your customers want more of a functional benefit or probably they, they prefer to have emotional benefits. Now, coming on to the cost part, the cost can be divided into four different types of cost monetary cost which is very uh, probably easily observable that when whenever we get into any exchange process when we purchase something we generally these days uh, in return we have to provide some money for obtaining a product or the service. Then we have time cost, energy cost and psychic cost. I will explain it to you through an example. Supposedly we have to book a railway ticket. So, when we go and book the ticket through a ticket counter, then probably and compare this uh, ticket booking through a counter in a railway reservation system, compare it with a railway's online ticket booking 
facility which is irctc.co.in now you compare these two options in case of basically irctc you will find that the ticket booking is very fast provided your infrastructure support of internet and the computer systems they are working properly you can book the ticket in in a very short time as compared to going to a ticket counter and then booking the ticket so the time is is very less in that case at the same time when you stand in the queue to book the ticket again you probably have and while you are traveling to that uh, place where you are getting the ticket book you have more energy cost as compared to booking the ticket through ircTC while sitting at your home the, the fourth type of the cost is psychic cost probably in case of uh, booking through ircTC when the system when you when you might have already booked the ticket in the past you will find out that that the system will automatically will provide you who could be the possible passenger what are their age what are their genders so you see lot of things are be, being facilitated by the system and then you can book the ticket more easily so that also reduces your psychic cost so in a sense what happens is through this online booking system you are able to reduce your time energy and psychic cost and for that probably some of the sellers can charge you slightly higher monetary cost which customers don't mind paying so this value uh, which means that actually we can uh, look at value as a ratio also yeah. between benefits and cost. cost so in benefits we have uh, uh, physical benefits Function. or logical benefits or functional benefits as we call it and we will have emotional benefits or in some book as they have talked about experiential benefit yeah. and on the other side for cost we will have monetary cost non monetary cost like for example here I would say convenience yes. um, or ease yes. uh, can also be uh, I mean absence of ease is a cost yes. so or, or convenience of uh, getting to a particular market place or a mall is a cost parking convenience is, is, is a kind of cost so and, and this ratio is therefore what we call value I, yeah. this is what I understand what you are trying to explain yeah and as you can see the customer will get into or probably the two parties will get into an exchange when they will have this balance shifting towards more in the side of benefit so value when is when it is perceived as positive the customer will get into the exchange now there could be probably many examples where you see that the sellers are probably trying to instead of probably not reducing the cost they might be trying to increase the benefit or they may just simply trying to reduce some of the cost other than the monetary cost so some of these uh, e-commerce based businesses they are also probably heavily focused and their business model probably accounts pro probably reducing for some of these costs like time energy and psychic cost and convenience, and convenience that is any time uh, yeah. according yeah. to the buyers yeah. uh, convenience yeah. so while you can purchase the, any product instantaneously through those online website at the same time if I talk about the functional benefit you can see a huge assortment of the products so if, if you have to take time out for going to market and purchase those product probably you have to spend a lot more time then probably just going on your mobile phones or probably laptops looking at marketing as a social process then there is a leading body of academicians named as American Marketing Association some of the most accomplished scholars in the area which gives the definition of marketing as, as an organizational function and a set of process for creating communicating and delivering value to customers and for managing customer relationship in ways that benefit the organization and its stakeholders now again it is very important to understand that this definition also talks about that 
concept of value however it also talks about the activities or the set of process which are involved that a marketing as an organizational function performs and these set of activities can be broadly categorized in three categories which is creating communicating and delivering of value to the customers so th that is what i when i have initiated uh, this session i said that we many a times we probably misunderstood marketing only just by communication or some of the activities which are related with delivery like uh, ad campaigns or the sales process we just refer them to as marketing on the other side marketing involves creating communication and delivery all three of these things so probably marketing starts much before the product probably is produced which is probably this part of this creation if i have this you can see in the picture of the creation the where the product is basically being created now in this creation creation is only not about probably manufacturing or ha or having the production process it is it is much beyond that it is understanding first what customers want understanding their needs in their context of consumption and then probably defining their needs in the specification of the product accordingly designing the products and then probably thinking about the ways how to produce that design and the product to give a physical form to those products so that is what this creation part is then once you have the product you need to communicate to your customers that is what this communicating the second set of activities is being depicted in this figure is that you tell your customers what you have and what probably that product or the offering has inside it then the third thing is taking the product to the nearest possible or the point of convenience of the customers so you see the flow of the value starts from the point of creation communication and the delivery and i think today uh, in these two blocks that means communicating and delivering earlier emphasis of marketing was on these two sides but today perhaps there is not much opportunity left to distinguish in these two areas so new research in marketing or new strategies in marketing are shifting more and more towards this side that means they're involving the customer involving the intended buyer prospective buyer as early in the cycle as possible and as a result you will often hear this new term which is uh, getting uh, prominence in marketing literature of today which is we call co creation that means you bring the customer right at the concept stage and work together as a result when the product or service is produced the customer already likes it because the customer feels a sense of ownership and that in many ways changes the dynamics and takes us more towards relationship which we will of course discuss in much greater detail later on yeah so just probably building on what uh, process chanta chatterjee is saying that the probably focus is shifting more towards creation and if we look at some of the probably more successful companies of the last decade we'll find out that those companies have excelled probably more on the creating side some of the technology firms if you see they have either understood and created products which have really surprised and delighted the customers or they have gone even beyond the stated need of the customers and they have addressed the latent need of the customers and come out have come out with a very innovative products so obviously the shift is going from communication and delivery part to the probably understanding and involving the customers from the very beginning of the process so it is very important uh, to understand that in regular everyday parlance we often think about advertising uh, a tv uh, uh, strip or a, a newspaper ad as 
that is this part it is a part of marketing but it is not the whole of marketing and much more exciting very uh, interesting areas are coming out from this this delivery part also that is the distribution the logistics the delivery chain management these are also exciting new areas for uh, research in the marketing domain but really very interesting uh, behavioral aspects psychological aspects and this what you often hear these days uh, huge applications of big data and analytics are all coming in 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 these early blocks just to add some of the changes which are occurring in these three different activities we will see that the, the, the way of delivering the product is changing because of the interventions of the technology and at the same time the ways probably the, the way in probably couple of decades back or probably in the last decade the company companies you used to communicate with their customers now probably that is changing here probably the user generated probably communication is becoming more prominent than company originated communication programs so these are some of the prominent changes which which we will probably talk about in some of the later sessions also so i'll take you further if i just want to represent a simple marketing system here you can see you have a seller or probably if you have a group of seller which which is commonly referred as industry and on the other side you have a buyer which and if you have a set of buyers or a number of buyers the population of buyer commonly referred as market now what what probably is being exchanged in this process is depicted in this figure you will see that a seller probably offers physical goods and the services to the buyer and in return get the monetary things on the other side if you look at there are some something which is also very important in this thing is that beyond probably the exchange of physical goods and the services and the monetary rewards that is basically seller gets there is a communication and probably there is a return or probably the backflow of the information from the buyer side which is coming back to the seller and that makes probably this marketing system as a whole and very interesting things are happening across it so i think we can take a pause at this point and just sort of recap all the issues that we have discussed which is very well captured in this diagram so fundamentally we are saying marketing is a process which is exchange of value between the seller and the buyer yes sometimes the seller and the buyer the place where they come together is also called the market so the market place yeah. can be a physical market place like a mall or it can be a website which is con commonly called as market space yeah. yes and uh, uh, as we see that the buyer is always looking for some value the uh, what the buyer has to part with is uh, this this part is a kind of a cost perception of cost and fundamentally when the buyer feels that the benefits and we have discussed the different kinds of benefits when the benefits are more than the different kinds of costs so the summation of benefits when it is more than the summation of costs the exchange will take place and a happy exchange will take place yes. so the outcome should be at the end of an exchange process is at least two parties are better off than their previous state or probably not worse than what they were previously okay i was just saying this exchange process is probably in the modern times we see the monetary value but marketing was even existing in the time previous to this money when the probably this uh, instead of monetary things probably there used to be the barter system so physical goods and service yes. in exchange another set of physical yeah. goods and service very good point yes that's it so i think we will take a pause here and uh, we will meet again uh, next tomorrow uh, with the next set of topics